All right, hello. I want to pick up uh, where we left off today in class. Uh, so in class, we had just figured, or finished up. Um, so this is our class 26 notes with our reading of our ternary phase diagram. So here we had the binary system MIK in water. So originally acetone was solvated in water. Uh, we're contacting with MIK and looking at the distribution of acetone between um, that binary MIK H2O pair. All right, so I have a ternary system. Right, made up of two solvents in which my third component, acetone, my solutes partitioning between those two. And so then we wrapped up thinking about our mixer settler. Right, so in terms of solving mixing, uh, mixer settler problems, right, so we're going to think of this in a two-stage process. And so I have a description written here, but we'll go through it um, as we work out a solution for an example problem coming up. Um, but in terms of how to think about this, right, essentially my first stage is going to correspond to my mixer, and N is going to go my raffinate feed, so that's my diluent plus my solute, so water plus uh, acetone. I'm going to contact that with my solvent, so I send it to my mixer, my single stage, and I mix the heck out of it, right? I mix it up so that I have close intimate mixing between my components in my system, so then I pull out a mixture out of my mixer and send it to a settler, where the hope is I just give it time, my two liquid phases naturally separate, and then I can pull off my raffinate and extract phase. So contextually, right, I'm going to write this as, you know, or draw this as a series of two pictures, where essentially we're going to specify the inlet um, to my mixer, right, my raffinate feed and my solvent feed. And so we solve problems typically in two stages, where given this inlet to my mixer, I can perform a mass balance and solve for the composition um, and amount of my mixture. And then once I know my compositions, I can go to my phase diagram, read off my compositions of my uh, raffinate and extract phase, and then once I have those, I can um, then perform a mass balance and solve for R and E. Okay, so key is, when I'm solving my mix, mixer settler problems, I'm going to think of it in two stages, right? Mixer and then a settler. I perform mass balances to get the composition of my mixture, which then allow me to go to my phase diagram because, because these two streams are in equilibrium and find those compositions. So let's go to a, an example problem um, and let's put this into to practice, okay? And so I'll write it out on a separate set, set of notes and, and share it with you all. So we have a single stage mixer settler unit that's used to extract acetone from its mixture with water by means of methyl isobutyl ketone at 25 degrees C in one bar. The feed consists of 40% acetone and 60% water by mass at a flow rate of 100 kilograms per hour. Pure solvent equal in mass to the feed is used as the extracting liquid. What are the composition and flow rates of the exiting streams? All right. So I'm going to start by bringing up a piece of paper, and I'm going to draw a picture, label my streams, then go back, get the information from the problem set, fill it up, and then begin to solve. Okay. So I'm going to start with right picture of my mixer. All right. And so into my mixer goes some feed. Okay. And my feed is going to have some composition. Um, X1 naught, composition of component one, all right? And so let me take a step back, okay? And as I solve, let me call component one acetone, okay? And I apologize, this tablet's a little sensitive on my new computer. So component one's acetone, component two is gonna be water, and component three is going to be MIK, okay? So going in in my feed, I have some solute acetone, which is solvated in water, and then I'm going to include MIK on there for completeness. Okay. Also going into my mixer, I'm going to have my solvent stream, so I'm going to label that S, and it's going to have some composition, call it Y1 naught of my solute, Y2 naught of water, and Y3 naught of MIK. Okay. So that system is mixed. All right, so send them to my mixer. Out comes a mixture of fluorate M, and it's going to have composition Z1, Z2, and Z3. 
and then that'll be sent to a settler. Okay, and coming out the top of my settler, I'm going to have my raffinate stream, and it's going to have some composition um, X1. Um, just need to fit them all on here. X1, X2, and X3. And coming out the bottom is going to be my extract stream. It's going to have composition Y1, Y2, and Y3. All right, so now I'm going to go back to the problem, and I'm going to start to fill in my knowns. Okay. So, all right, my uh, feed contains uh, acetone and water. All right, so water is my diluent. Acetone is my solute. And so our feed's 40% acetone and 60% water by mass. So we'll use mass fractions. And the fluorite's 100 kilograms per hour. So my feed is 40% acetone, 60% water, okay, and so then there's going to be no MIK in that feed, and my fluorite is 100 kilograms per hour. Okay, got it. So then in terms of my solvent, right, we have pure solvent, so my solvent's going to be pure MIK, um, and it's equal in mass to the feed. Got it. So my solvent, S is going to be equal to F, and that's going to be equal to 100 kilograms per hour. And Y1, Y2 are both going to be 0, and Y3 is going to be 1. Okay. So my first state, or first step is, given right, my inlet streams, I'm going to calculate the amount and compositions of my mixture. Again, the idea is once I have the compositions of my mixture, I can go to my phase diagram and solve the compositions of my two liquid streams in equilibrium. Okay, all right. So I have a single stage, three system, three components. So I can write down in theory three mass balances. Okay, so I'm going to start. So start with balances on my mixer. Okay. Again, I apologize for my handwriting. Um, this tablet's a little sensitive. So my mixer, I'm going to start with my total mass balance. So my total mass balance is going to be F, or it's going to be F plus S is equal to M. Okay, cool. And, and so F plus S equals M. So I know M is going to be equal to just 200 kilograms per hour. Then I'll perform a component mass balance. Um, so I'm going to try and make this as easy on myself as possible. So if I start with, um, let's start with the balance of uh, component 3, right? So for component 3, I have x3 naught times f. Let me do a better job writing that. x3 naught times f, okay, where x3 naught is just 0, plus y3 naught times s, okay, where y3 naught is just 1, is equal to, Z3 times M. Okay. So solving for Z3 then, right, I get Z3 is going to be equal to S over M. S could be 100 over 200. And that'll be equal to 0 0.5. Okay. So Z3 is 0 0.5. Okay. Uh, let's keep it easy then and let's go with component 3. Uh, or Let's see, yeah, component one or two, right, would be the next easiest. Okay, let's start with component one. So component one. So component one is not present in my solvent stream, so that's zero. And that's going to be equal to Z1 times M. So Z1 then is equal to X1 naught times F over M. So that will be 0 0.4 times 0 0.5 which is equal to 0 0.2. Okay, so to summarize then, we have mass is equal to 2, or M, the mass of my mixture is, two, or mass flow rate of my mixture is 200 kilograms per hour. Z1 is equal to 0 0.2. Z3 is 0 0.5, right? So Z2 then, all right, it's going to be equal to 0 0.3 because Z3 is equal to 0 0.5. Okay, 
So there's step one. Okay, cool. So now the idea is, is I first solve for my mixture because now I know what's going into my settler, okay, and coming out of my settler are going to be these two liquid phases in equilibrium with each other. Okay, so to solve for the compositions of my raffinate and extract stream, okay, I'm going to go back to my notes, okay, here, all right, and I'm going to try and read from my phase diagram, okay. Um, and so what I really need to do is let me um, open these up with um, something so I can edit them. Okay, so I'm just going to open these up so I can draw on that diagram on my tablet. Okay, so I'm going to go to my figure. Okay, and so now I'm just going to find my points on the graph. Okay, so let's start with um, Z3. Z3 is 0.5. Okay, so Z3, okay, that course, component 3 corresponds to MIK. So if I change this to red, okay, so here's pure MIK. So I'm reading compositions from the line parallel to that point, that axis. So 1, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5 corresponds to this line here. So I'm going to be somewhere on this line, okay. Cool. Now I find a second composition. So Z3 is 0.5. Z1 is acetone. So acetone is 0.2. So here's pure acetone. Read lines parallel to that axis. All right. And 0.2 is going to be all the way down here. So I'm going to be on this line. Okay. And where those two lines cross, all right? X marks, ugh, X marks the spot. Since I'm within the two-phase region, I'm going to get phase splitting along a tie line. Remember, my tie lines are experimentally determined and are contained in the graph for us. Um, and so I conveniently fall on this um, dotted tie line here. Okay, And so I read the tie line across to read off the composition of my two phases. Okay. Now remember, if you didn't land exactly on a tie line, if you're in between two, you'd have to interpolate to find the compositions of those two phases. Okay. Cool. Okay. Last note, right, just for completeness, is uh, composition of water was 0.3 mole fracs. So if I had looked at my water axis and I go out to 0.3 mole fracs, I'd be on this line. And so if I were to draw it, right, intersects at the same point for completeness, right, everything works out. All right, so now what I'm going to do to read off the compositions is the lines make things a little messier, is I'm going to erase, okay, just because conveniently we're on that diagonal line, okay. So I found myself on my phase diagram, and then I read across to my tie line to find the composition of those two phases in equilibrium with each other. Okay, so next I just need to read off the compositions. Now remember water, right, so water is my diluent, right, so that originally in my feed I had some solute in, with my diluent, which is water. So water is going to be the major component in my raffinate. So when I read off these compositions here, that corresponds to my raffinate phase. Okay, so I just need to read off two, the third, right, I can find by you know, the fact that my mole fractions need to sum to one. So I know this is going to be my water-rich phase. So looking at this point, right, I see that... Right, I hit water on this line. So in terms of water composition, that looks like it's 0.85 mole fracs water. Okay, so I'm still, well, let me label here and then I can always transfer over. So water was component two. So X2 was 0 0.85. Okay, um, in terms of, so let me erase that, right, to make it clear. And then in terms of um, acetone, Right, so acetone, I'm reading off lines parallel to my acetone axis. And it looks like, so if this is 0.85, oh, so remember, i got to go to this side. So it's between this one, 0.85 and 0.9, which corresponds to 0.1 and, and 0.15. So if I just say it's in between there, it's in between 0.1 and 0.15. So I'm going to call X1 0.125. Okay, so between point five, one, yeah, between 1.5 and between 0.1. So I'm going to call it 0.125. 
And so if that's 0.125, right, then I must have the x3 um, by the fact that these all have to sum to 1 is going to be 0 0.025. Then if I go to the other side, my MIK rich phase, so I read off MIK, those lines parallel to my MIK axis, right, and it looks like I'm here. I'm in between, so on this side it's uh, going to be between point, um, 0.25 and 2, which on my MIK axis would be between 0.7 and 0.75, right, if I'm looking at this right. All right, so I'd have a line. Okay, again, it's depending on my ability to draw straight lines on this tablet. Okay, it looks like it's approximately between 0.75 and 0.7. Okay, so I am going to call this then, so this is um, Y3, MIK, Okay, I'm going to call that, so I'm looking at where the dotted line crosses my equilibrium curve, and then drawing a line parallel to that point. And so MIK would be between 0.75 and 0.7, so let's call it 0 0.725. Okay, just guesstimating to the best of my ability here. Okay, so let me erase that. Then if I look at acetone again, okay, acetone read off lines parallel to my acetone corner. Okay, so going from 1 to 0.9 all the way down to 0. Okay, so it looks like right, I'm right here. So I'm in between. Again, I'm just going to guesstimate in between. Okay, if I could draw straight lines, I might be able to come up with something a little better. Okay, but for the, in the absence of, of that, right, I'm, here's 0.2, here's 0.25. I'm going to call it Y1. 0.225, right? It's being halfway between 0.25 and 0.2. And so then my balance then y2 must be equal to, let's see, this is 995, so is that 0.05? Uh, no, hold on. This, so that's uh, 9, that's 5, this is 0 0.95, so this is yeah, 0 0.05. Okay, got it. All right, so from there then, I've estimated y1, y2, y3, x1, x2, and x3. So let's record those here. Okay, I'll go back to my black pen. So solving, I have y2 is 0 0.225. Okay, and this is actually y1. Y2 was 0 0.05, and Y3 was 0 0.725. Then in terms of my raffinate stream, X1 okay, X1 was 0.125, So x1 was 0 0.125, x2 was 0 0.85, then x3 was 0 0.025. Okay. okay, so now I have the compositions of my product streams, and now I just need to solve for the amounts, R and E. Okay, so to solve for the amounts, right, now I'm just going to perform a balance on my second unit. And so again, I have three components in a single stage, so I can write two mass balances. Okay, so going, or three mass balances. Okay, I, I won't need three, right? I only need two, though, because I just have two unknowns, R and E. Okay, so for the first, I'm going to write Z1 times M is equal, well, let me write my total mass balance first because then I'll just solve that first component mass balance. So my total mass balance is M is equal to R plus E. Okay. So my total mass balance. And then I'm just going to go to one of my component mass balances. Okay. So I'll write Z1 times M is equal to X1 times R plus Y1 times E. Okay, um, so now it's just a matter of do I want to solve for R and E first my component mass balance. 
Um, um, let's kill R. So I'm going to take my mass total mass balance, and I'm going to write this as R is equal to M minus E. Okay, so I'm going to plug this in here for R. And so I have Z1M is equal to X1 times M minus E plus Y1E. Okay, so Z1M is equal to X1M minus X1E plus Y1E. Uh, collect terms, right, and then ultimately we're going to solve for E. So bringing this over to the left, I'm going to have M times Z1 minus X1 is equal to, on the right-hand side, E times Y1 minus X1. So E then is going to be equal to Z1 minus X1 divided by Y1 minus X1. And that's going to be then times M. Okay, cool. So, and then once I find E, R is just going to be equal to M minus E. Okay. All right, so if I want to try and compute them based on the numbers we have, just for completeness. So I should have had uh, MATLAB up. But it's okay, let me get a little calculator set up here. Okay, so um, let's see, Z1, so if I come up here, Z1 is equal to 0 0.2, okay, so I have Z1 minus X1, X1 is 0 0.125, okay, divided by y1 minus x1, so I have y1, 0 0.225, minus x1, 0 0.125, and that was times m, which is 200. Okay, so my extract stream, all right, it's, oh, boy, my extract stream, all right, it's going to have a flow rate of 150 kilograms per hour. So it must be then that my raffinate is going to have a flow rate of 50 kilograms per hour. Okay. And I mean, it, it makes sense, right? So my in terms of my um, extract, okay, so I started with pure solvent, okay. And so now my extract is going to contain all of, well, start with pure solvent, right? But now I'm also going to uptake um, my solute plus some of that diluent, right? And initially, um, my solute, right, I had 40 kilograms per hour of my um, solute going in. So even if this were, you know, immiscible and all of my solute went to my extract stream, then I'd expect to have 140 kilogram um, per hour, right? We're slightly higher because I'm also picking up some of my diluent in the process, okay? So there you have it. There's E, there's R. All right, here's all my flow rates. Um, that's the solution strategy for mixer settler. Or if I go back to our notes, right? Again, the key is is solving your mixer settler in two stages. First, performing my mass balances on my mixer so that I could calculate the composition of my mixture leaving that mixer. Why do I want the composition of that mixture? so that I can go to my phase diagram to determine the composition of my streams in equilibrium, leaving that settler. Okay, hope that helps. If you have any questions, let me know.